on to the second disorder example of the Harker set. Three dots, disordered structures, and B02. Now we have um, I over sigma is quite strong, and for some reason it stops, you know, just before it reaches the ISTR minimum resolution. It's a bit strange. Also, it's uh, it's merged data, so this is why we don't have an R end. It shouldn't really happen. There's no reason why there should ever be merged data anymore. Anyway, solve. We can solve and refine and just carry on normally on this one. Right, it looks pretty good. We've got a structure here, but these two oxygens are clearly a bit big. So Shell XT thought they're oxygens and then on refinement they actually blew up a bit. I suspect, again, let's have a look at the distance. It's 1, 1 1.258. It's not a carbon. So I suspect these are both fluorine atoms. Um, name F. Let's refine this. So this is going to make it worse, obviously, um, because they're disordered over those two positions. So Control M. This is the worst one. So this is going to be part two. So we're making this one here part two minus 21 and part one 21. So they're linked together in the occupancy. So they add up to one. One is in part two. The other one's in part one. Make it anise and refine that again at the hydrogens. And watch this one here. So there is a peak here. So that's clearly hydrogen that needs to be there. If we want to look at this slightly differently, we can go to work and then we go to disorder tools, which, which may be shut for you. So you open that up and we can look at part zero and part one, part zero and part two, and uh, look at all the parts here. So you, you have ways of looking at that. This may also look slightly different to you. So this is when you've got draw plus installed. It looks like this. Okay, so this looks pretty good. We are still red, so there's still a shift, and also the goodness of fit means we haven't got the weighting scheme adjusted, and obviously we need the zip file at the end, so let's switch it on now. One thing that's missing, Control M, once it's done, obviously is a hydrogen on that nitrogen, so that's quite clearly visible, even without those Q peaks. And um, we can add, add this, be H add 43, so this will add an sp2 hybridized a hy a hydrogen to an sp2 hybridized atom okay so here we are this is almost a finished structure let's look at this it has one one outlier so we probably want to omit this one here oh hang on before we omit the whole thing this should also appear in the bad reflections it doesn't actually disappear here so it's it's not that as bad as it looked but let's just omit it from here um, and control R should hopefully be the sort of final structure here. Control M looks pretty good. There's hardly any residual. It's a very low number here. So we can go show P, show P, um, zero and one. So this is one uh, of the two molecules we've got and show P zero and two, that's the other. Yeah, so the fluorine is either on that side or on that side. Right, so let's try and do a non form factor refinement because if you look at this, this might be interesting with a slight angle in here. So this is not really all sp2. It's a bit funny here. Um, also this angle, if we, if we select those ones and type cell, so that's an angle of 127 degrees. That's really quite a lot open. So it's, it's, it's an interesting one to maybe look at in more detail. Non spherical form factors, uh, tick that, and we are going to use ORCA 5 and the test conditions. Now, because we've got this disorder here and these hydrogen atoms under here, I'm not showing them, so show P itself will show all the hydrogens again. I, I don't want those hydrogens dealt with, so I want them isotropically refined for the moment, and I also want them affixed as they are right now. What we can do, we can go neutron H this. So this will, on refinement, move them to where they should be from the neutron uh, experiments uh, that, that, that we know where these hydrogens should be. And then they will refine from there. So they're still constrained. They're still riding on their parents. So now the wave function is calculated in turn for each of the two molecules we've got. And then the form factors are combined for the actual refinement. Right, so this takes a little time. It's quite fast, really. Um, four seconds. Um, and now we have the refinement. And we have a structure just like before. The R factors is very, very similar here. What we haven't done, really, we haven't done a, um, well, 
we, we need to update that table because now we've got new atomic positions and new, new model. We need a new wave function and we select slightly uh, higher data, uh, higher basis sets and so on. But what I'd also like to do, I would like to free those hydrogens. So those ones here are affix zero. So I'm letting them go. Yeah, they are now refined completely freely. Um, and, and that's that's what we like to do for those. But those ones I would like to keep constrained because 40% of a hydrogen isn't really going to um, to fly. Right, so it's doing the same thing again. We're refining all the hydrogens freely now, all the hydrogen atoms freely, except for those two here. Now, when that's done, we have, I don't know why the GUI is getting completely messed up. That's obviously something we need to fix. When, when we're done, we're not really finished because we chose the second level here, the work level. So this is when you're supposed to work with these non-spherical form factors. In order to finish this off properly, you'd really need to go into the next level, the final level, and then do everything until it's completely settled. So I'm not doing this now because this will take a little bit longer, but we finished the refinement here, make sure that everything is settled with the current form factors, refine 12, so that should really deal with it. And see whether we can see anything. So um, we can look at the properties. So one of the properties we're interested in is the deformation density which is effectively the difference between the independent atom model where every atom is just a sphere and we don't take bonding, lone pairs, none of this into account. And then the non-spherical form factors where we do take bonding and lone pairs into account. And you can see the lone pairs beautifully here. And, and this is really one of the other things you get out of non-spherical form factors. You do get the correct position of these atoms. So these are all now freely refined at in the come out at where they would be really in reality. Um, and this this is one of the things you get, but also you do get these sort of, you know, bonding information or information about lone pairs and possibly bonding directions when you're claiming there's a hydrogen bond or not a hydrogen bond and so on. So there is a number of things why these non-spherical form factor refinements are not just giving you lower R factors, but they also give you more chemical information. Thanks for using Olix 2.